I'm stirring together chocolate and butter to make a very special brownie, the brownie puddle tart. This is a, not your usual brownie because it has puddles of ganache that are piped into the chocolate after it's baked, keeping it creamy while you have the delicious chewy brownie. So while the butter is melting with the chocolate, I'm going to make the quick ganache. I'm melting chocolate in a double boiler over hot water, not simmering so it doesn't tighten and get stiff. And then room temperature cream is going to be added. And since the cream hasn't been heated, it won't separate. The chocolate gets melted in this ganache, but not the cream. So it will be, as soon as it's smooth, it will be ready to pipe. And of course, it can sit until the brownie is baked because it's not going to be piped into it until the brownie has cooked completely. So you can see it's getting very smooth as the cream integrates into the chocolate. Now I'm going to take it off the heat, set it aside until I'm ready to pipe it. And go back to the chocolate and the butter that's melting for the batter for the brownie. You don't have to worry about the water simmering here. The steam won't tighten the chocolate because the butter already has water in it. Butter is part water. And there's enough fat to protect the chocolate. Now it's almost completely melted, so I'm going to take it off the heat, and I can start making the brownie batter. I like to add the cocoa powder first because while it's hot, it really dissolves more quickly. Then the sugar, pinch of salt, and I'm going to beat it by hand or whisk it by hand because the brownie is so easy to do, and it really doesn't need to be mixed a great deal either. You can see how beautifully that mixed in and really quickly. So now I'm going to add the eggs and wait until you see the change when the eggs are added, especially to this warm ingredient. These are whole eggs. I'm whisking quickly and it's going to get so shiny and thick. The eggs are already thickening it. Vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract. And then the next ingredient is the cream cheese, the mystery ingredient, because you never see that it's there. There are no streaks of cream cheese. There's just the wonderful moisture and the wonderful flavor that cream cheese gives to chocolate, but only when you use a small amount. If you use a large amount, it makes the chocolate sour. And now, as soon as I see that there are no more streaks of the cream cheese, I add the flour. And it really doesn't matter for a change. Brownies are so forgiving what kind of flour you use. In fact, if you want to have a more chewy brownie, you can even use bread flour. At this point, I'm stirring rather than beating. And then the final ingredient are the pecans. And I toast them first because that really brings out the flavor. You can use walnuts if you prefer. I happen to love the softer texture and the flavor of pecans with brownies. They're broken coarsely because I like texture. Some parts are fine, and that's fine too. It had just been toasted in a 350 degree oven for about seven minutes, not until they start getting too brown because that ruins the flavor and they taste burnt rather than brown. And just stir it in. You don't have to worry about making it tough because of all that butter and chocolate. There's no way to make a tough brownie. Now, to make it really elegant, instead of just baking it in the usual brownie pan, I'm using a two-piece tart pan. Greasing the bottom with a little bit of shortening so that the parchment will stick. Because that way, if I want to unmold it and serve it and make it look really elegant, I'll be able to do it easily. And I grease and I flour or spray with a grease and flour. Wipe off any extra and pour it into the pan. And it will come very close to the top. But don't worry, it rises up above kind of like a souffle. And then it settles down. It never overflows as long as you have the right size pan. Of course, if you're going to use a smaller pan and you see it's reaching the top before it bakes, just bake the rest in a little custard cup. And you can shake to level it or use a little offset spatula just to spread it. And you can see how close to the top it is. Don't worry. And I like to set it on a baking pan because every once in a while I forget it's a two-piece pan and my hand goes right through it and it lifts it out of the pan. So set it down, put it in a 325 degree preheated oven for 30 to 35 minutes until it tests done. 
And I have one that's just to that point. I'm going to show you how you can tell when a brownie is correctly baked. It will have puffed up a little. And when you insert a skewer an inch away from the side and it comes out clean, you know the center is nice and moist and it's time to make your brownie puddles. First, you have to make the holes. And in order to make the holes, I use a chopstick or the back of a wooden handled spoon, depending on what size I want. But remember that that ganache, when it gets firm at room temperature, is going to be slightly chewy and creamy. And the rest of the brownie is fudgy and chewy. So you get all this different texture that's so wonderful. Now, it's hard to pipe sometimes in these little holes. And you notice how I'm twisting them so I'm not breaking and cracking the top. But if I want to make larger ones, I can use a larger spoon and just twist it in, and that way it doesn't crack. Go all the way to the bottom, because it's nice to have a whole plug of the ganache filling. See what a nice hole that gives it. And do a whole bunch of them, because every serving should have at least two of the ganache puddles. I was showing a five-year-old little girl how to do this and letting her do it, and every hole she licked the spoon, and her mother said she has a mind of her own. And I said, yeah, every kid does when it comes to eating chocolate. I'm cutting the corner off the bag to make a little piping bag out of my ganache and zip seal bag. And I'm going to fill, you can do this with a little spoon, but look how quick and easy it is to do it with a bag. Just let it drip in, stop piping, let it fall from the bag into the little hole till it fills up completely, stop squeezing and lift the bag away. And that way you won't have it spread all over the top surface of the tart. You want it to be a little full because what happens is that it flattens out after it sets. The, the ganache actually sinks in a bit. You can go back and add more if you like. And allow this to set completely until you slice it. If you want to hurry, you can put it in the refrigerator or freeze it. But it's best eaten at room temperature. Although, if you want a really fudgy brownie, you can eat it frozen. Now, I'm going to cut into this one that has been made ahead so you can see what the inside looks like. And you can see how the puddle that starts at the top goes all the way down to the bottom. So this is what I call the brownie puddle tart with multi-dimensional chocolate flavor because it has cocoa, the best eating chocolate, puddles of ganache, and it's baked in an elegant tart pan so that you can present it at a formal dinner party. This is Rose Levy Berenbaum with Baking Magic.